I'm Stephen Benoon and you're watching Israeli News Live. I wanted to kind of give you just a little bit of an update on the things that are happening with Pope Francis in the United States. Uh, there's a lot of things that we're trying to follow up on as far as his visit thus far. Uh, it's very much a political move without a doubt. Uh, he is still talking about a one world government as he met with Congress today. Uh, he is very much pushing for that. He is also still pushing for a redistribution of wealth. Uh, and everything about the Pope's visit thus far has been anything but spiritual, so to speak. It's been every bit political. It is very obvious that the Pope of Rome is clearly moving towards a new world order. Uh, and of course, the fanfare that he is getting is completely amazing, to say the very least, from the time that he landed in uh, Cuba. Uh, AOL News themselves, the very lady that was... Uh, broadcasting his trip there to Cuba, said he got the, the reception as of a rock star coming into Cuba. And then, of course, he comes into the United States. President Barack Obama meets him at the airport, bows to him. Well, what do you expect? He's got to bow to the very uh, uh, the, 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 the so-called prince that shall come, the king of the earth right now, the pharaoh of Egypt. So he does bow to him, and then on top of it, gives him an inauguration greater than that of any president of the United States has ever received. It just The red carpet was rolled out, and of course the Pope passing his, uh, his New World Agenda and the encyclical that he writes about uh, cl uh, global climate change, etc. He does show up in a little fiat, of course, giving a little car. Kind of reminds me of Hitler, if you think about it, because Hitler was the one that said that the Germans needed their own family car, and that's where the Volkswagen actually began its own birth, a little small, little tiny, little egg-shaped car that it was. And now the Pope of Rome is also pushing a very similar agenda, but under a new, new reason altogether. Uh, but, you know, the people are loving this man. I mean, if I have ever seen a guy that has so much uh, uh, charisma for the, for the people and the people just bowing down to him and just, just frothing over at him. I mean, they're, they're running, the Secret Service agents are running out, grabbing children from the crowd, run them over to the Pope for him to kiss them, etc. And yet then he gets into the political arena and he is setting the stage for a one world government. I mean, it is, it's ridiculous what we're seeing here in the United States, and yet the whole U.S. is falling for this. So anyway, this is just a brief, uh, uh, just a brief summary of the things that we've seen thus far. I will be diving deep into everything that he has spoken about thus far. He did speak with Obama privately, uh, so I, I've not been able to get the information as of yet what the details are of the meeting that they had there. And, and let me just say this too, friends. We were on Hebrew Nation Radio today and discussing some of these things as well. And one of the things that I said there to, to, to Bonnie and to Ron on their program there is that keep in mind, we're seeing the beginning of the New World Order come into place here. We may not see the actual power given fully to him as of yet, but that he is laying the groundwork. I'm fascinated to know what he's going to say tomorrow at the United Nations. I'm going to try to cover that. Uh, I'll be watching that live myself, uh, and, and I'll try to capture some of his comments as well so that we can share those with you here and, uh, and just try to really get, help you to get a grasp on what's happening. We are definitely seeing prophecy come to pass. He has come up strong with the small people, according to Daniel chapter 11 there. The Palestinians are the small people. They are raising, by the way, both flags, both the Catholic flag and the Palestinian flag at the United Nations. I'm curious to see if they're going to be flying uh, together or if it's going to be one on top of the other. Because to me, if that's so, it's going to certainly show us the sign of Daniel chapter 11 that he came up strong with the small people. Very, and to do what? He wants full control of Jerusalem. 
uh, without a doubt. And so many people are looking for a Muslim Antichrist. I mean, come on, people have got to wake up. It is not a Muslim Antichrist. He's staring you in the face. Don't you know that the churches, the early church fathers, everyone always believed that, they, that the Antichrist would come straight out of the Vatican. It would be one of the pontiffs that would come. It's only been modern times that people have this change of idea. So anyway, we'll be watching it, guys. I want to bring up everything I can to you. I'll be searching the scriptures as well to see what prophecies he may fulfill. We know that he's fulfilled already Obadiah. In fact, I shared this with an Orthodox Jewish man the other day uh, as he, he was walking down the street with me. His name was Yosef. We, we walked from the old city all the way up to where I lived at here. Yosef, a very precious uh, Jewish brother there. And I shared with him the prophecies that are being fulfilled right before your eyes. I shared with him Micah, uh, how that they're trying to internationalize Jerusalem. I shared with him Obadiah, how that... That uh, shoot the tetem. He should. They shall drink masculine plural on God's holy mountain, and then ishatu, which is feminine uh, gender inclusive, and they shall continue to drink. Uh, you know, uh, showing that it was the second communion service they had, where they included all the nations. Uh, as part of that particular service. So we are seeing prophecies being fulfilled, and no doubt many more are going to be fulfilled. And, and just in closing in the news broadcast here, let me share one other thing with you that is very disheartening this evening. Here in Jerusalem, in the very streets, I, I walked Avi back to his car. As I'm walking down to the streets there, uh, right here on Yaffa Street, right there where Yaffa and Benuda Street come together, they were having a big street party of a lot of the uh, the young Orthodox men were out there, and I'm not talking about the ultra-Orthodox, ultra, ultra but those that even believe that still wear the kippah, they have the tzitzit on and everything, is it, it was just a drunken stupor. And it just, it just grieves my heart to see the city that's supposed to be considered the most holiest city in the world. And yet the young people, and religious young people especially, supposedly believing in the coming of the Messiah and in this condition. If they need your prayers ever, they need them now more than ever. So I cannot encourage you enough to pray for the young people here. And then to top it all off above everything, there's a group of men standing there flying the gay pride flag with the Star of David on it. I posted it on Israeli News Live, uh, a picture of that on our Israeli News Live Facebook page. And I stated in there, the gay people have hijacked the rainbow, the covenant that God gave to, to, to not just Noah, but he gave the same covenant to the animals, clearly wrote out in Genesis chapter 9. He gave us a covenant sign to both Noah and his, and his family, as well as the animals that he would not flood the earth ever again. He gave them the rainbow sign. And then on top of it, the wise men themselves actually followed a six-rayed star to the young child Yeshua, Jesus himself. This was actually revealed in the humane gospel of Jesus there, that they followed a six-rayed star. Both covenant signs that were giving, given to, to, to the people of God have been hijacked by the gay community. It's time, my wife made a comment one time about the rainbow. She said, it's time to take it back. And we must take it back. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening from Jerusalem.